Good. Hey, Justine, how are you? Uh, Rob Sestrino, and very sad to see you uh, go out of the game. How are you doing? Hi, Rob. Um, I am honestly doing fine. I thought that last night's episode was kind of like hilarious. I found joy in it. So I, and I'm choosing to see it that way. So I'm fine. Okay. Tell me, what was it? Uh, what was the part that you thought was hilarious, Justine? <laughs> um, the spider bit, because yeah. for multiple reasons, um, everyone out there is equally afraid of spiders. No one enjoys spiders. Like people don't go on Survivor and, and they're like, oh, I like hope you see a lot of spiders. No, like that's absolutely not how it is. Um, and so the fact that they compiled a bunch of scenes of only me complaining about the spiders, <laughs> um, it was relatable because I do hate spiders and I will like put my stamp on that till the day I die. But it was just, it was funny to me. And it, I, they, they painted me as like this like girly girl that doesn't like to be around bugs and stuff. And people were like, wrong show. But again, no one goes yeah. on Survivor with spiders. So. Just, yeah, I'm going to back you up. Uh, I'm not a fan. Thank you. They're overrated, in my Thank opinion. You. Yeah, I know. So, too many eyes, too many legs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I feel the way about spiders that Cody feels about salespeople. Yeah. Okay, so, so you hate me too? <laughs> no, it's about spiders. That's how I feel about spiders. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no problem with salespeople, but it seems like that for whatever reason, this tribe really seemed to have some bad experience sales with, on sales violence. with salespeople. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you know that in your line of work, it was so stigmatized? Well, yes. I th salespeople um, definitely have bad reps to some people, but that's also if you're a car salesman, like if you're in software sales, like you're not a schemey, slimy person, or at least if you're a good software salesperson, you're not that way. Um, and I could be wrong, but I don't think sales has ever been a death sentence to someone in Survivor. So I never thought twice of it when I said like, yeah, I work in software sales, but in hindsight, I should have just said cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, you live and you learn. Yeah, I think that in 43 seasons, I don't think that that has ever uh, come up specifically if about I ever sales. Get invited to a returnee season, I'll just transfer to customer success or marketing or something that's yeah. like less intimidating. Right. Justine, uh, we got to talk about everything that went on with the hat. Okay, uh, so you're on the island, Cody. He's made this hat, and now he wants to uh, give it some flair. Did you think at all that that was sus, uh, that he started asking everybody for their beads all of a sudden in hindsight? No, because Cody was such a character out there. Like Cody is Cody. Like he was exactly in real life, like how he has been portrayed on the screen, except in real life, I did not think he was doing half the scheming. Um, mm -hmm. I said in one of my conf confessionals, I was like, I don't know if Cody's here to like, just for a kind of like a free vacation or if he's actually here to play the game. Um, and he was definitely playing the game more than I thought he was out there. So I was fooled by that. But um, I mean, he's such a character where him creating a hat, like a perfectly weaved hat and then wanting to bedazzle it did not even strike me as weird for him. <laughs> okay. So then what was your reaction when you found out that this was a mission that he was on to collect all of the jewels? my mouth dropped to the floor. Cause I think everyone on my season coming into this was like, how is the beware advantage going to work? Cause if someone says a really weird out of place, you know, line, we're obviously all going to perk up to that and be like, uh, mm -hmm. okay, that person definitely found something. So we knew that they had to change the beware advantage for our season. We just didn't know what it was. And like, I was like mouth to the floor shocked when I heard back at Ponderosa that that is how it worked for my season. And I was like, wow, like that actually is so cool. But hindsight is 2020. I hate that I gave him my beads. Well, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the plan that you had going in where, uh, that you put a vote on Cody because, uh, you felt like the votes were going on to NECA and you were concerned that NECA was going to play, uh, the shot in the dark. Uh, how confident were you that that was what was going to happen at the tribal council? I was like 90% confident that I was safe. Um, it wasn't until, uh, Cody said that thing about like, yeah, Justine, if you're here tomorrow, I'll make you a hat. 
Um, and I could tell like NECA was being like overly smiley and happy. And I was like, she's acting really confident right now. Um, and so it, it clicked for me. I was like, I think I'm going home tonight. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, we, me, Noel and Dwight, we trusted Jesse at this point. We were like, we're just going to put all of our trust in Jesse. He's with us. Like, we don't have to worry about it. And so in my little voting confessional, I say like, I hope everyone sticks to the plan. Um, all four of us stick to the plan because we had a plan that was mm -hmm. our plan. Um, but it turns out me and Noel and Dwight were the one or yeah, me and Noel and Dwight were the ones getting played. Justine, when you watch the episode back, uh, were you surprised to hear from Jesse uh, how much that uh, he felt like that you were a, a threat to his game specifically? Um, yes, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that because if I'm going to go down and get voted out, I will 100% take it uh, because I'm a threat and for over any other reason, <laughs> honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get voted out because uh, I'm like annoying or anything related to my character or because I'm like weak, like I would 100% take like getting voted out because I'm a threat over anything else. So honestly, like I chose to like take that as a good thing that he said that um, it stung a little bit that he said that I was the person he jived with least on our tribe because I actually really liked Jesse out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of a pleasant surprise for me. You said in the episode last night that you have a really good lying face. Is that <laughs> is that is that true? I immediately turned to my fiance and I was like, is it bad that I said that? I was mm -hmm. like really like second I was like kind of spiraling after I heard that. Um, but uh I mean, I just have a straight face. Like I'm good at just like keeping my face in one facial expression, I guess. So mm -hmm. if I am lying, I can just literally keep my face like this. Yeah. Poker face. Poker face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You seem to bond instantly with Noel. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the relationship you had with Noel out there? Yes. Um, so Noel and I hit it off like pretty immediately. Um, it was just, it was an easy relationship to build because we're so similar in age. Um, and on top of that, I think we both sensed that each other was competitive. I had no idea that Noel was a Paralympian. Um, she didn't tell us that. Uh, and so she told us that she was a lacrosse coach. And so, so I was still like, okay, this girl's athletic. Um, she's going to be good at challenges. Like she doesn't want to lose either. Um, and I said in my confessionals that didn't make the edit that, um, she felt like someone who I would play sports with growing up and the girls that were on my sports team teams growing up were the girls that I was like closest with the girls that I was friends with and the girls that I would hang out with most. And so, um, it was a pretty instant bond for us. So in the preseason, we previewed all of the tribes and, and we've said, okay, it, it seems like Justine and Noel, I, I bet they're going to get along. And both of you talked about how, you know, working with the women. Uh, and that was something that was important to you. And really in all the other tribes uh, that we saw that the women, there was at least some talk of the women sticking together. Did you two at all ever hit it off with NECA and talk about that? Or was NECA off instantly with Cody? That's actually a good question. Um, going into Survivor, I knew that there's only been like one successful all female alliance, and that mm -hmm. was Black Widow's Brigade. Um, and aside from that, a lot of them just don't end up succeeding. And so I never went into it thinking like, oh, women's alliance. Um, I I knew immediately off the bat that like Cody and Neca were kind of um getting close, and I also knew that they were targeting me because they didn't really make an effort that much of an effort to talk to me out there. Um, and so in return, yeah, I, I wasn't really trying to, you know, uh, get to know NECA and, and like gain her trust and like talk game with her either, because I could sense that I was their prey. Yeah. After the challenge that there was a moment where there's some conversation about, okay, there was a missing puzzle piece that was still in the bag. Um, was, was there, universally assigned blame as to what happened uh, with that missing puzzle piece? Well, I think you can see on TV how the episode went that we immediately get back to camp and um, Cody is incentivized to say this because he's in an alliance with NECA, but he says, you know, we, any one of us could have made that mistake. We were all there. We, we all saw it. Like it's, it's on all of us that um, the puzzle piece wasn't taken out of the bag. 
Um, and so like, I think some people can choose to see it that way. Um, for me, if, how did you see it? How, how did I see it though? Um, if you're choosing to do the puzzle, if you're volunteering to do the puzzle and it's like, it's on you to be remembering those instructions and like, you're carrying the bag and you drop it, like that's on you. Um, obviously we have a ton going on in our minds during this challenge. We're just like looking at all the other tribes, like where's everyone at? Um, and we're not really allowed to help with the puzzle. If you're volunteering to do the puzzle, I think it's on, it's your responsibility to remember to take the puzzle piece out of the bag. Yeah. Do you think that should have been a bigger factor in deciding who was going to go home? I thought it would be. Um, and you know, obviously I'm guilty of the whole, let's keep the tribe strong thing. Um, as are a lot of people, uh, you can see that on other tribes as well. Like I, I thought that should be, um, you know, a bigger factor in it. Um, but honestly, seeing any woman go home again was not great. So whether, if, whether it was me or NECA, um, I don't think it would have been pleasing for anyone to see. Mm -hmm. um, that means two women out. And obviously the whole keeping the tribe strong mentality means, okay, we need to keep boys in for, for longer because of their strength. So yeah. it is what it is. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the relationship that uh, you and Noel had with Dwight. I think we heard about it a little bit more than we saw it. Uh, just how close uh, were the two of you with Dwight? So Dwight was 100% in our circle of trust. Um, and that's something that you don't really see on the episodes. Uh, and that's something that I even vocalized on my tribal council um, because we didn't want them to know that Dwight was 100% with us. Um, we kind of told him to keep playing the middle um, because we want to get information from what the other alliances are saying and uh, stuff like that. But no, Dwight was 100% with us. So when he lost his vote, that was the beginning of my downfall. Yeah, if he had his vote, how do you think this tribal council goes? <sighs> um, it's hard to say because obviously that would make three and three. Um, it's also hard to say because, you know, if Cody found that beware advantage, like who's to say that if Dwight had kept his vote that you know, Cody would still have been able to collect all the beads. We have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing is for certain, that's if, if I knew that I was on the bottom, if I wasn't 100% sure that like me, Noelle and Dwight trusted that Cody was, uh, sorry, that Jesse was voting with us. Um, I absolutely would have played my shot in the dark. Can you talk a little bit uh, about some things that we might not have seen in the first five days of the game at Vessi that would be interesting to us Survivor fans? Honestly, like some of the main things like the shelter falling on us and then that somehow producing fire. I was like, I hope that makes it on there. Um, Dwight ate a worm like 10 minutes into us getting to Vesey Beach. Like we weren't even starving yet. And I was like, I double doggy dare you. And he was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he eats a worm. Um, we also endured that storm and it probably lasted a good four or five hours. Um, but we didn't, they didn't show that like Vesey suffering, <laughs> which was kind of a bummer because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well. If they didn't show it on TV, did it really happen? Um, but yeah, there was a lot that happened out there that doesn't make the edit, unfortunately. Now, we did see back in the first episode that you were the one to get the fire going uh, for your tribe. Uh, how meaningful was that for you to be the one to be able to get the fire started? It was it was very meaningful for me because I was practicing making fire from Flint with paper towels in my Santa Monica sink for probably two months leading up to going on Survivor. Um, I was like... I want to be able to make fire on Survivor. And the moment I did that, I looked up and I just remember Jesse, like, kind of like whisper shouting at me. He was like, you just made fire on Survivor. And I was like, oh my God, I did. Um, it was definitely on my Survivor bucket list. I'm glad that I got to accomplish that. Obviously, I think it ended up um, positioning me as a threat, um, which is kind of annoying because I think that only happens um, for women on the show. If you come out too strong and you show your cards too early, it's like, mm -hmm. you're a threat. Um, but people like Gabler and Sammy didn't get that same, uh, you know, reaction when they made a fire for their tribe. Oh, so they're I, an asset. Yeah. Yeah. They're an asset. Exactly. Okay. Can you give us before you go, uh, maybe one, uh, wild thing that Cody did that we didn't see on the TV show that you experienced? One wild thing. I don't know if you want, I guess wild is one way to put it, <laughs> but there are carvings on the trees out on the island, obviously from past survivor seasons. Mm -hmm. And one of them said Kenya on it. And Dw or Cody read it as Kenny A. 
<laughs> yes, that famous um, survivor player, Kenny A. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're the ones that are dumb for thinking that uh, it said Kenya. We'll never know. Okay. Uh, Justine, uh, very sad to see you go. Uh, that uh, I know you were a, a trendy winner pick. Uh, I thought you were going to go really far in the game, so disappointed uh, to see you go out Thanks, so soon. Rob. But all the best outside of Survivor, okay? Thanks, Rob. All right, take care. Appreciate Bye. it. Take care.